Hey guys, this is Martin Wright from Margo's Dog Training. I'm here today to talk about grooming a puppy. Excellent. So, uh, what we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about grooming, we're going to talk about how to introduce your puppy to tools. Things like toothbrushes and nail clippers and nail grinders and brushes for fur and hair. And we're going to be trying to keep you involved in the conversation. Anyway, <laughs> check it out. Here we go. So today, we have a puppy with us. His name is Archer. Archer, oh, man, Archer is a heavyweight. Archer the heavyweight is who we got with us. Archer is a golden retriever puppy. He is 11 weeks old. And look at his face. Look at that. Look how cute that face is. If that doesn't make you go, aw, I don't know what will. <laughs> All right, guys, so grooming is extremely important when you're living with the dog and you're being with the dog. Why? Because a dog that looks good feels good. So we want him to feel really good, so we keep him looking really good. Matting is an issue with most dogs. With a lot of dogs, unless they're short-haired, really short-haired dogs is not an issue. But any dog with long hair, we want to make sure that there is no matting, um, because matting could lead to skin irritation and skin problems. Um, the fur is supposed to be loose so that skin can breathe. And if it's matted or tangled or knotted or dreaded here, then we will have uh, problems with our dog's skin breathing. Also, grooming is great for bonding. It allows the dog to know that you could touch them all over. You know, they enjoy it a lot of the times. Once we teach them how to do it the correct way, they enjoy the grooming. Um, they get rewarded for it. So it's a good thing to do for bonding. It's also very good to be able to handle your dog and let them know that you could touch them all over their body. Grooming is the same as drying your puppy off once it gets in the rainstorm. You know, it's the same kind of tools and the same way we go about it. So it does help us with all those things. So make sure you check out our series on dog body handling because that goes hand in hand with this grooming. If you can't handle your dog, you can't groom your dog, right? So we have to make sure we have comfortable handling of the puppy before we start grooming. Another thing is I'm showing this with a puppy, but I would go about it much the same way if I had an adult dog. So if your dog is an adult dog, you go about it the same way, just go slow. You know, puppies, it's easier for them to adjust to new things, while adult dogs, it might just take them a little bit longer. Okay, guys, I'm gonna tell you the story of the two giants. Let's say there was a giant, and, um, and he wanted to give you a nice manicure. He really wanted to give you a good job cutting your nails, you know, cleaning your nails, and uh, painting your nails. So what he did is he walked right up to you, he grabbed you by the scruff of your neck. He dropped you on the ground, put his knee in your back, pulled out your arm, and then went about nicely painting your nails. That's the first giant, all right? Now let's say there was another giant, and he wanted to give you a manicure. So what he did is he walked up to you, and he just put his hand out like this. And then you walked over, you touched his finger, and he gave you five pieces of silver, and he walked away. The next day he came back and he, he put his hand out like this. And then you went, hmm, I remember this giant. You got a little excited and you touched his finger again and he gave you five pieces of silver and he walked away. Then the third day he came over and by as soon as you seen him, you're like, oh giant. So, so he, he put his hand out, you touched his hand, he gave you silver, but then he rubbed your hand a little bit. And then he took out his paintbrush. He saw that you were nervous, he gave you some more silver. Then he walked away. Next day he came by, he showed out, put out his hand, he took out his paintbrush, you were a lot more comfortable, so he painted your nail, he cleaned your nail, and then he gave you an excellent job with a manicure. Which giant would you rather? That is a story that just outlines the point of how we want to handle our dog as we're grooming them. We use the least amount of force possible. Sure, I could just grab this puppy and I could by force cut his nails. I could by force brush the puppy. I could by force brush his teeth. But that is not the way that I want to handle a puppy. I want to teach the puppy that the things that I want to do are really rewarding for them to want to do as well. I want to teach them that what I want to do when I want to clip your nails, that's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun for you, as much fun for you as possible. Be the second giant. 
Go out of your way to reward your puppy when they're doing new things. It's gonna help them. Same thing is true with the older dog. Make sure you go out of your way to, in, to reward them for trying new things. Okay guys, so first thing I'm gonna talk about is giving your puppy a bath. As you can see, I don't have a bathtub here, but there's a couple things I want you to go think about as you're preparing your puppy for a bath. One is that if you have a small puppy and if you're lucky enough to have an extra crate, a small crate, bring that in the bathroom with you when you're taking a shower. That way the puppy can hear the water run, could get the smell of the water, could see the steam and all those kind of things and get used to it before you put the puppy in the bath. Another thing that I recommend is putting the puppy in the bath with no water in it and then giving them a bunch of treats. That's also a good thing to do. Sometimes what I'd do is I'd put the puppy in and I'd already have water in. And what all I'd do is I'd just pick the puppy up, I'd set the water before the puppy um, before I brought the puppy into the bathroom, it would be in the tub already. I picked the puppy up and I gently put the puppy in like this. As soon as they hit the water, then I start giving food. All right, when I bathe the puppy, I make sure that I wet this part of the puppy first and I wash here. As soon as you wash your puppy's head, he's gonna shake. So I, I make the head last so that way I don't get everywhere wet or as less, least wet as possible. Sometimes you could teach a puppy actually to jump in a bathtub. For a guy like him, I'd probably put a small box that he could climb on and I would lure him into the, uh, up onto the box and lure him into the bathtub. In time, my goal is gonna be to be able to tell the dog, get in the tub. And the dog hops into the tub all on his own instead of having to go chase him down, pick him up and try to get him in the tub. Once the puppy's able to get in the tub and is pretty comfortable with that, the next thing I would do is I would fill the tub with water and then I would put the puppy inside the tub. And the way I'd go about it is I would hold the puppy underneath the chest and underneath the belly like this. I'd pick him up and right in to the tub like that and then I'll start giving him food right away. All right, um, if I'm gonna run the water and I wouldn't have the water be too high, I'd have it be low. Um, if I'm gonna run the water for the puppy, then I would make sure I run it at a low level so that way it's not blasting out of the faucet um, because that's gonna be nervous for, it's gonna make the dog nervous. But um, I'm gonna have it just a little trickle out of the faucet and then I'm gonna be feeding the puppy the whole way through. As for shampoo, do not use human shampoo with a puppy. You do need to get dog shampoo because their pH balance is much different than ours. Okay, so the second thing we're gonna look at is how to brush your puppy's teeth, right? So what I have here is I have some, yeah, this is chicken flavored toothpaste. It is from Nylabone, it's pet toothpaste. Archer! And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it here on my finger. And then I'm gonna take Archer here and I'm just gonna bring it in close to his mouth. And he licks at it. That's the first step. Just letting them lick the toothpaste off. And I might also just rub my finger a little bit in his mouth as I go. I'm gonna do that one more time. He looks like he's into it, right? Just a little bit of chicken flavored. The thing about toothpaste, whoa, where you going, buddy? The thing about toothpaste for dogs, it comes in all these wonderful flavors like peanut butter, chicken. Uh, I think I've seen salmon before, you know? So it comes in all these kind of, Excellent, and then I'll just rub, rub along the teeth. So that's the first step. You're just getting them used to the fact that that's toothpaste, that's what it feels like. Excellent. From there, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a finger brush. And usually you could buy these things all from one, um, all in one package, but this is a finger brush. And I'll take my toothpaste once again, and I'll put it right on the finger brush. Whoa, all right? And then I would just let him lick it right off of the finger brush. And at the same time, I could start moving back and forth. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of play bite in here, a little bit of biting on the finger brush, but the finger brush will, um, will help us not to feel too much of these razor sharp puppy teeth. Excellent pups, excellent. I get in here, I just lift his jowls. When we practice our handling exercises, it gives us the ability to be able to just lift the puppy's jowls and get in there and start brushing the teeth a bit. 
all right? And I might do that for a few days. Archer did a really good job with that. He's not biting down a lot on this. And because of that, um, I think that he could be ready to move on to a real toothbrush. So I wanna make sure that the dog is not biting too much on the finger brush before I move on to the next stage. And the next stage is this, a toothbrush for pups. This is the best way. This is what you wanna get to doing once a day for your dog. Right, so we have our toothbrush and we put our toothpaste right on the toothbrush. I like to start it off with my finger right underneath the bristles, right? Just like that. And then I would let the puppy, of course, lick it. And then from here, I go in. This pup has very few teeth because he's very young. But um, just the, the, the motion of going back and forth over those teeth, that's what we want to do. We want to get him used to that. Excellent. In the back too, look at that nice dog. Of course, an exercise dog and a tired dog, it goes a long way in helping you clean your puppy's teeth. Good job, buddy. You're a good boy. Excellent. Okay, guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm just taking out some of the different grooming combs and brushes that are on the market. I am not a dog groomer, um, but I just want you guys to kind of take a look at what's out there. Um, for this pup, I'm gonna use what's called a slicker brush. There's two of them here. Um, the slickers are the best for a pup like this, but really, I would ask you to check online. There's a lot of videos online about brushes and what kind of brush goes with what kind of coat, what kind of fur, you know, what kind of comb you should use and what the different purposes of all of them are. Um, but when we're introducing a dog to a brush, what we wanna do is first, I like to just let the dog see the brush and then just feed him. He's already putting it in his mouth. That's not how a brush should be used. Toothbrushes are for the mouth. Um, fur brushes, hair brushes are for the hair. So I let the puppy see it and I just feed them right away. Excellent. Right, and really, I would just have this brush underneath the couch and I will come when I'm hanging out with the puppy and I'll just kind of feed him. I might even put some food right there on the back of it. He's not really supposed to eat the brush, but if he associates it with food, that's great. Um, next thing I'm going to do is just rub the back of the brush along them, you know, and I can feed them while I'm doing this. Just touch it to them. Just let them see that it touches his body, you know, before I even use the bristles at all. You know, that kind of thing. Um, just that way he sees how my hands move. He feels how it goes across his body and he gets used to that a little bit. Excellent. And then the third part is starting to um, brush the dog. Now I like to move the puppy into this position. I like this position. And I don't need to do much. That's all I need to do. I, just, I mean, in the beginning, you just need to just get a little bit. And then tomorrow I'll come back and I do a little bit more. I just do a little bit of this. He doesn't seem to mind. I'm not pushing hard into his fur. But as time goes on, I'm going to start to go harder in so that way I'm able to, um, I'm able to get any kind of dander that's in there, get any tangles out, um, and get the puppy really used to it. The back is where I like to start because it's least sensitive. The back and the sides. From there, I could work right down the legs. The back legs. Right? And then I could come up. I could get on the shoulders the chest, I can get to the other shoulder here. I don't wanna struggle or fight with the puppy at all. So if I sense that the dog is getting any way agitated, I'll put down my brush and I will go to my food. Ooh, look what I got. Ooh, look what I got. I got food. Excellent. I got food. Then after that, I'm gonna check, of course, get on the back of the puppy's neck. Excellent. I'll flip the puppy's head 
Oh, got to move in this position. And I could flip the puppy's head up and I could get right here underneath his neck. As gentle as I can at first, and then I get behind the ears. And then of course, I got to get down here. The belly, under the arms, or the front appendages, I should say. And then of course, we have to get in here to the back appendages as well. And finally, I wrap up with the tail. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about clipping the puppy's nails or um, grinding the puppy's nails using a Dremel. Um, before you do that, you should definitely check out our videos on puppy handling um, because that's gonna help you out a lot. We have to do that first. We have to first be able to handle the puppy before we can um, cut their nails, right? So I conditioned the puppy, and this guy, Archer here, he's been to a, a few of our puppy kindergarten classes, but I conditioned the puppy first that I could touch his paws like this without the puppy yanking his paw back. If he's doing this, I can't cut his nails, right? So, because that's when you're gonna end up quicking the puppy accidentally. So I make sure, and quicking, by the way, is when we cut the quick which is the blood vessel that runs inside the nail. Um, I don't wanna cut that. So I wanna make sure that I could hold the puppy's paw and I could close, I could open, I could do all that. Oh, all right, you ready? Here we go. All right, so um, quick stop. Quick stop is very important when you get out your tools for uh, nail clipping. The thing that this, what this does is if you accidentally catch your dog's quick, which once again is that blood vessel that runs inside the nail, and your dog starts to bleed a little bit, this will stop that bleeding, all right? So um, what I generally do is I would open it up and I would shake out a little bit, put it in the cap, and then I'll put it all the way over there all the way over there, or I'll put it all the way over here, far away from the puppy so that way he's not able to, you know, lick it um, and start to eat it. So that is what quick stop is, all right? I'll put this, I'll leave this out and I'll put it all the way over there, way over there, all right? So that's that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at different tools for nail clipping. This is a scissor style clipper. You can see both ends move. And then we also have a guillotine style clip, clicker, clipper, not clicker, clipper, all right? That's where Frank is gonna put in a clicker thing and it's gonna, it's gonna look silly. Anyway, um, so, so that's how that works, right? Um, first thing I wanna do is I wanna just show the puppy this, let him sniff, put it down, and then I will give the puppy a treat. Give him food. Now I can see that this pup already had his nails clipped because there's a little bit of anxiety. There's a little bit of jumping around when he saw that, um, that nail clipper, right? And then here comes food. Another thing I like to do is that over here I have some matchsticks, right? And once I could hold a puppy's paw, I let him of course sniff this, but once I could hold a puppy's paw, I put the matchstick on the puppy's paw. I put it way out, so that way I could clip the matchstick. And he could feel what that feels like, right? He feels the vibration of that running through his nail or running through his paw. I reach that out there, and then I gently just clip the matchstick. Excellent, and then I will Give him food for that. I might spend a few days doing that, you know, um, so that way, just so he feels the different feeling of how that feels. Um, I put it on the back of his paw again. I, if you notice, I have the sulfur end on the back and the stick end out, right? Right along his, his uh, toe, reach in. He hears that sound. He feels the vibration of the matchstick being clipped. 
It doesn't, he doesn't feel anything else. And that starts to set him up, you know, to condition him to realize it's not a big deal. Once again, I put a bunch of food in here. So when we're clipping the nails, next thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to start to get him introduced to the nail grinder. I actually like grinders more than I like nail clippers for my own personal dogs. Um, I use a Dremel. I have the cordless Dremel. You plug it in. It uh, charges. Um, sometimes you can get the diamond bit. That will last forever. You know, you could do dogs forever with that. Um, this one is just a sandpaper um, bit that I have on it. So what I do is turn it on, put it down, and I play with the puppy. I might turn it off. I give him food. I might turn it off, let him sniff it. Check it out, turn it on. If I'm gonna let him sniff it when it's on, I'm gonna keep the spinning area away from him. Now you can see I could touch that. It's not a big deal, it doesn't hurt at all, but I don't want him sticking his tongue on it or anything like that. I want him to hear it and get to used to the sound, right? I could turn it down lower so it's quieter if the dog is really sound sensitive. Or if it's an older dog, excellent. I could turn it down, make it quieter, and you can see how much food I'm giving here as I'm, as I'm introducing them to it. Lift the head a little bit, I'll touch it, and just let him feel that vibration on his paw. Put it down, and here comes more food. There you go. Lift his paw. He's being very, very kind. Now this dog has been with us for a little while because we're shooting a video. So he, like, I would not go as long as I've been going with Archer here with a regular puppy, with any other puppy. I'd only be a few seconds, 30 seconds at first, you know? Um, but this is a little bit different of a situation for him. Good job. So I have this. Now this is many days later. I would take this and put this on that. Make sure he's as calm as possible. Up you go, little fella. I take this. And I touch that to that. I put everything down and I give him food. Excellent. Right, and I continue that way until I'm grinding the nail of the puppy. Um, once again, when I'm grinding, I wanna make sure that I can see where this color change happens, and where that color change happens is where I'm going to um, stop grinding, right? With this puppy, you could see, actually you could see through to the quick, right? You could see that there's a couple things going on with this nail. Um, so really, all I want to do is I want to clip. When I do clip, I want to clip the very end. You can see how this nail, like right here, is where I want to clip off, right? I don't want to be underneath there. And you can see the pink where the, um, where the blood is flowing. I want to be on the white, on the gray part of the nail. All right? Excellent puppy. Very good dog. So I'm going to go ahead and reach in here and do a clip right there. There you go. Um, for, so, so far we just did the front paws and I just showed you how to condition the puppies um, to the front paws, clipping the nails and the grinder. We also, of course, have back paws that we have to take care of as well. And for that, I actually like a different position. I actually like this position. Just like that, all right? And now I made that look really easy. And at home, when you try to do that, you might see that it's a little bit uh, more difficult. I grab my thing. This goes right here, like that, right on the pad, this, and click. Good job. For this guy, too, 
I'd want to take some scissors and clip out some of this hair here, especially uh, in Boston in the winter time. That picks up snowballs a lot. So if we cut it back, it's a lot easier for us to deal with. Um, and once again, I'd introduce the, the scissors the same way that I introduced the nail clippers to the puppy. Um, that's a side note. Sidebar. Okay, so I have to keep this really quiet because Archer is sleeping and I don't want to wake the puppy. So the important things, what do we learn here today? We learned that grooming is super important and that um, through our grooming, we could touch all over the puppy's body. We could help them feel better because looking good and feeling good goes together. We've also talked about checking out the videos about handling so that way you could hold the puppy's uh, paws and you could do the things you need to do for this grooming video. If you liked what you saw here today, then definitely give us a thumbs up. And if you really like this video, then subscribe to the channel so that way you can see more videos along these lines. Down below, you'll see links to our other social media like our Instagram and our Facebook. You'll also see a link to my website where you will see our puppy kindergarten program. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments below. And if you have started to groom your puppy and you have difficulty, leave that in the comments below as well. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to be able to help you with your dog. Until the next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog. Thing now.